something right here is very controversial. This is what I was trying to tell you guys. And Tommy Sotomayor has been talking about it. And if you look around here, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You actually have Tommy Sotomayor respond. This is my post where I say Tommy Sotomayor hits another home run with the truth. Check it out. Scroll down. Right here, Tommy Sotomayor says, wow, this is amazing. So, there's proof right there. That's all the comments right there. I don't know if you can see it good, but this is the best way I can try and show this. Black women who love white men, period. And these are the same black women that are bashing black men, saying that white men are better than black men. The slave mentality has 17,000 likes. 17,000 likes. Why don't we go to the page and kind of show you, basically. This is what Tommy Sotomayor and other guys on YouTube have been talking about. And it finally brought me to come to the sense to come here because I noticed that I have that same issue with a lot of black women that are out here in Melbourne, Florida, who have the same problem. Black women who love white men, period. A lot of my friends are talking about getting the hell up out of Melbourne, Florida because a lot of these black women are just disrespectful. They have no love for us. We say hi to them, they just give us the shady eye like we've done something to them. You should just like, you even got a light-skinned black girl that likes white men. And I'm surprised because I've seen a lot of light-skinned people now tuning for white men these days as if no other race is good for them. My keys. And here's my brother right here who can never find his keys because he's always misplacing his keys. Where's my keys? I don't know. Just look downstairs and you're always looking in my area. That is the key. Come on, man. Why every time? Anyways, this is what I wanted to show you guys. And that's the site you guys all need to go to. Greetings and blessings in the name of Ja. You know who it is. Choose your the choose you show. Like I said, man, once again, I'm sorry for the delay of taking so long of coming out with the episode, the second episode. But it's been a hectic past few days, man. It's been real busy. It's been off the chain. You know, I've been working like five to one at my job over here at BK. So, you know, I work five to one and I got to do that again tomorrow. Today is, is, you know, this is just another day. So I'm just looking, you know, I'm thankful for the blessings that I have. I'm looking forward for another day. And I got some big news for y'all. Um, I got approached by the um, the dude at the news station, um, Central Florida News 13. And um, basically we're talking about the traffic lights in the road. So. If I find that on the, I'm looking on the channel today just now because I just came from there because I was just out on the street. I just came back from Palm Bay um, to get some water from, um, for, um, for the house. So we got some water to drink, you know, because we, you know, we buy water to drink. We don't, you know, we don't try to be using no filters because right now we don't ran into that filter stuff, but we just do it the old fashioned way. But anyways, I got approached by this dude, you know, one of the reporters of um, CFN 13, Central Florida News 13. And we were talking about the traffic lights, which I say, I think that the traffic lights that they have up there on Minton and um, I think it's Minton and um, what's that road? Minton Road and Palm Bay Road. Yeah, those two roads that intersect that you see like when the, it has cameras on them and when the light changes, right, it changes to yellow. But when it changes to yellow, it has like a little moment where it sits in yellow before it turns red. Well, this is what it does. You know how when it turns red, and if you turn on the red, the camera's supposed to catch you and take a picture or videotape you doing that mistake? Well, it doesn't do that. It does that when you pass a yellow light. So we're all complaining about it. So if I can get that footage maybe like sometime, I will definitely put it on there. If I'm not on there, it depends because sometimes they'll record me on the Central Florida News stuff and... I never, they like, they edited me out for some reason. They probably gonna put the lady in because he liked what the lady was saying. And I told him my viewpoint because I live in Melbourne, but I didn't live in Palm Bay. But people in Palm Bay who are residents of Palm Bay are having that issue and not us in Melbourne. I live in Melbourne, Florida. Um, in the next episode, I'm definitely gonna shoot you more of Melbourne, Florida. I think today I'm gonna definitely go get you to see a little bit of Florida tech. So what I'm gonna do is just chill out here and roll up a little something, something, and then just head up on outside. 
you know, take a little breeze, and then um, I'm going to show y'all Florida Tech so you can get a good view of Florida Tech. Because a lot of uh, my homies, we were talking the other day how we I live in the ghetto, and I showed you the ghetto. I'm going to show you more of the ghetto when I get out in a few moments. But if you look, on the same street of the ghetto on University Boulevard, there's Florida Tech. You don't see none of these young African-American women saying, oh, you know what, let me go ahead and get my education so I can not be in this hood now. Nope. The same people that I grew up with in Central Junior High, Melbourne High School, and sometime in, some of them went to BCC with me. I see those same people in the hood, they ain't, they ain't even finished school, they ain't even finished their career, they got no aim in life. All they want to do is sit around and have children. Everybody, almost everybody that I went to school with has kids. And the reason why they have kids is because they get into a relationship which they know is not going to last, and they just, oh, let's just lay down and just do whatever. This is a city where everybody competes to see who can have kids at the youngest age. They're looking to be like, they feel like if, if they reach 20, that's too old. So most of them, by the time they reach into their 20 or or, 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 or like in their mid-20s, they already start having children already before they reach 30. By the time they reach 30 or 40, they look all mashed up and all backed up. And when you see them, they look old. Like me, I'm in my late 30s, I'll be honest with y'all. And I'm still doing my thing. And I'm, so a lot of people say I don't look it. You know what I'm saying? Because I take care of myself. I don't run around trying to be a daddy to everybody on the street. You see what I'm saying? I don't run around trying to say, you know, I'm going to have any kids. I'm trying to get my education, get my life together because I went through a few years of a rough life and now finally where I need to be. So check this out. What I'm going to do in a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and videotape Florida Tech and show you how close it is in the hood. And I'm going to, you know, record a little bit of the hood. I don't want to go into it too much, but I'm going to show you what's going on. And then after that segment, I'm going to go over the issues that we have with black women, you know, the um, issues that Tommy Sotomayor was talking about, and what we're, what we're addressing is not, we're not addressing the issue properly. We're addressing the issue in a way that we're trying to do everything we can to villainize the black woman, and then on the other side, we're doing everything we can to villainize the black man. So what we need to do, what we need to do is come together and set up a dialogue where we all can come together and, and, let, each other, let, each, and let each other group know how we feel about it. So check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and record the rest of the true do show. I'm going up on the street. Just give me a few minutes. I told you what I was gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna show you Florida Tech. I'm gonna show you a lot of things that happen around the neighborhood. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the neighborhood because all the time I have because I couldn't get any artists this week. But I'm but um I got some emails though. Fortunately, I got some emails from people that say. That they're interested in trying to see if they can get on the Chuju show. So the Chuju show is a happening show. This is a real show. It's something I just came up with. It's a way to promote and to get other people of the same avenues to come together. So people who have the same mindset to come together and to bridge the gap. Because if you look about, it, if you look about it, if you guys were to live out here in Melbourne, you see how terrible it is as far as like when a person's in school, they have nothing to do after school. There's no rec center. There's no place to hang out. There's nothing to do. The only thing they got out here is bingo. And I think I might just walk around far enough to show you that there's nothing but bingo. But it's like a good little walk with what I would have to do to show you. But you got nothing but bingo stores everywhere. And I wish I had took the camera earlier to record the fact that I was um, going to be on the news and to record that they had all these bingo places. They got bingo. They got these casino, little casino places. That's all they have out here. The only fun place they got out here in this area is in Melbourne over there, not too far. I can walk there maybe take 20 minutes. It's called Andretti, Andretti Theme Park. And basically, I went there on one of my, I think it was a birthday celebration, one of my brothers. I'm not sure which one, it was one of my younger brothers. We went down to this place called Andretti. And Andretti is probably the funnest thing that they have out there because you do get to ride the little go-karts and they're pretty fast. But I remember when I went on there, and I, as big as I was at the time, not as big as I am now, but a little small, but in my height, you know, that I was still able to get on those go carts and I was happy and I was like, I never, I never lived that in my childhood and I got to finally see that. So, check it out, man. I got more of the video that I'm going to be filming. You're going to be seeing a little bit. I'm going to show you a little bit of Mel, a little bit more of Melbourne. Um, show you a little of the spots and um, that about it. All right. Stay up, fam. Thank you for supporting the Chuju Show. Peace. Bless. What it do, y'all, once again? Man, you know what? This doing this series has really got me excited, right? Um, basically, um, my mom she works for um, the, um, she works in the medical field in the um, healthcare for like the elderly, and basically, she works in a union. The, the union she works for is called the SEIU of Florida, 
and it's a good union that my mom's doing. She's doing a fight on it, and I found, you know, found a lot of interest in it when I was doing, you know, I did the Medicaid now thing, the healthcare thing, you know, to try to push for, push for it at the time when it, when things were going good. Um, basically, even though I kind of look at healthcare differently because of the fact is I can't afford it and they're still trying to make me pay for it. They are saying that if the prices are going down and that more and more people are applying for it uh, out of uh, what was six, I think it's five out of six million that they have that have applied for health care, universal health care. But I decide that I'm going to file exempt and I'm going to do that to, um, sometime today and file an exempt. But I'm going to document, basically what I'm saying, I'm going to document what my mom's doing over there. I believe she's going to, uh, I think it's Jacksonville. Or was Tallahassee one of them? Whatever the capital part of Florida. I can't even remember because it's so far north. And I don't be looking out for I look out for I'm more for the ATL. But you know, I, I like the fact that you have they have a law. The law thing here is nice and all and it's designed good and everything. And it seems like a good system because Florida certain things in Florida has a better system because they're trying to legalize marijuana, which is another thing I wanted to talk about. The only thing bad about the about their their government is so far. Like when you want to go down there, it's so far, far away. Like Atlanta, Georgia, you know, if you stay right up there in the main, in the outskirts, like Stone Mountain where I was at, and Decatur where I was at, and other parts, you can actually find the area where you can you can get to the bus line. It doesn't take you that long. Bus and train line with Marta, it doesn't take that long, and you're able to get to right there because Atlanta is right there, right in the main part of Georgia is Atlanta because they consider that the capital. Bam, right there, you can go ahead and try and do whatever you can about the laws. But here in Florida, everything is so far and spread out. I mean, don't get me wrong, um, Georgia is spread out too, and it's pretty far and everything's far out. But Florida is not up to par. It's slightly off par when it comes. It's like 30 years behind Georgia. But you did see the bus I was trying to tell you about, the blue buses. That is the um, Space Coast Transit. They started it a few years back. It's been out. It's been more than 10 years since they had it. I don't know. I don't know the exact number of years they had it, but it's a good system. It's only a dollar 25, and those buses run pretty often. But they, I think they're trying to get it to where the buses run more often because I think they run like every 45 minutes to every hour. But it's cheap, and it's actually the the times that seem to be still somewhat convenient to the time you would need to get the buses. But they stopped running like about. I don't. I think they stopped running between. I think 10 and 11, I mean, no, 11 and 12. I'm not sure exactly, but somewhere like that. They don't run 24-7, but the bus system, I'll admit, is a decently good system. And it's still convenient. And the fact that the matter that they have it at all now, showing that down here is improving, but we need to get something going with the entertainment. So that's what I'm here for, because everyone's looking at me like I'm the hero. So it's, I got ideas. I talked to those people that um that club the other day, um, City Limits. And they're thinking about it, like I said. They're not doing anything right now. There's no talent shows going on. So what I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to see. I know I've been getting some material from some artists that um, are seeking to get in, make a name for themselves. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, try and see if I can maybe showcase them for a minute and, you know, show you about them. You know, the, hear their music. And we're going to be working on some other things. So I'm going to be on the next True Drew show. I'm definitely trying to get footage of me going inside of the, um, we're going inside the um, SEIU. I don't know if they're going to let me get in because the police do monitor and they check everything. Hopefully they don't harass me and say I can't bring the camera in. If I can't bring it in, I can't bring it in. But we'll see. I'm basically, I see a lot of people bring cameras and snap photos. So maybe they'll let me bring it in. And I'll go down there and we'll definitely film that event. I'm going to go with my mom. See what the fight's all about, and you know. So check us out. I'm, I'm filming a lot of stuff. And today, the issue that we were going to talk about. Don't think I have forgotten about the issue. Today's issue, I went on it earlier, was about Sisters of America today. Now, I showed you a lot of evidence that there's a lot going against them right now because if you look at the, the statistics, and if you look at, how should I say, your surroundings, and if you see what's going on, it's, it's they're losing. I'll be totally honest with you because that Snow Queen, she's going to take everything. Before you know it, she's going to come like a blizzard and take everything away from you. 
And this is not to be no racial empowerment. It's not in racism and nothing like that. It's the mindset of today's sisters. Because if you look at the mindset of many of today's sisters, we are messed up. Their mind is messed up. Their mind is so messed up. And they are our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our grandmothers, the ones we grow to love and respect. But if you look at what's going on in the demographics, if you go around the block down here in Melbourne, Florida, you'd be appalled. Because it's like... No one, if you look like I showed you, Florida Tech is just on one side. The hood is right there. You can walk right into the hood and go directly into Florida Tech and actually go to school. But a lot of these people, they just don't have the intentions of going to school. Their mindset is basically like they don't care. They they look at it as if they can live that fast. Like, so they go around in that corner over there in that back area there and start selling dope and thinking it's cool. But if you would see the footage that I have seen, I should record it and you see it's a lot of arrests, it's a lot of shootouts and stuff like that going on. People getting themselves into positions where they don't need to be. And it's not necessary. So, I'm basically doing this show for people to wake up. I'm going to check out some talent. And what I'm going to do is, since this is just the second episode and things are kind of not working right in my favor as far as me trying to showcase Melbourne, I'm going to basically, little by little, try and get all the talent that I can out there. And today's issue that we're talking about, I'm hoping that Tommy Sotomayor has jumped on the issue that I was talking about earlier. Because he was talking, when I, when I showed you on the Facebook page, you can see that Tommy Sotomayor did check it out. And it seems like he's going to chime in, which is cool. So that means there's my opening, and that's proof to you guys that... I am friends with Tommy Sotomayor on, on Facebook, and I also have I also link to his YouTube accounts, like as far as you know, liking his page and following his page. I like I don't follow everything he says, like I say, certain things that he says. I mean, it's a wake up call for Black women, basically. So y'all need to go ahead and check that out, man. It's it's just listen to the empowerment that's going on through these brothers, and then you got Warren Ballantyne, like I said. Warren Valentine, matter of fact, speaking on that, I wanted to let that out because this is thoughts I want to get out. I'm going to call this that segment, thoughts that I want to get out. Uh, Warren Valentine has, um, he used to um, run a um, radio show in the morning called the Warren Valentine Show, the True Fighter Show in Atlanta, Georgia. And I believe it was based in other areas like Detroit, Michigan, because he used to work with another Facebook friend of mine named Yasha Frazier. And um, she was like a DJ for him, I believe. I guess she did the um, the sound bits and like he cued her or whatever it was, but they worked together. And then the, after a while, his show, at that time, his show was, you can listen to it online and you could also listen on our actual radio station, which was um, 1380 WAOK, which is the best radio station to listen to, in my opinion. You listen to it from six in the morning all the way throughout the rest of the day. And you get some good enlightenment in, in, from people like Warren Valentine, usually, when he was there. Lorraine Jot White, in the morning, she would be the first one, but I heard that she's no longer a part of that no more. And this is after I left Atlanta. And um, Mo Ivory comes on. Mo Ivory comes on from like 10 to 1. And I think, I'm not sure, but I believe that Reverend Al Sharpton comes on the very same station on 1380 WAOK. And you got Michael Basin who comes on at 3 o'clock. And um, the Steve Harvey Morning Show, I usually catch him at 6 in the morning also. But what I'm basically saying is Warren Ballantyne is one of the best people to listen to on radio. Like, early I was showing you the Empowerment Network. You need to just Google it. Just Google the Empowerment Radio Network. And you're going to find it. It's going to click you to the way. It's going to show you the website. You just click onto it. Warren Ballantyne comes on Monday through Fridays. Now, they got the confirmed time from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Fridays. And we're also trying to do a campaign where we can get them to to strengthen their partnership with Sirius Radio. So I'm asking if those of you who are listening to this and those of you who know who he is, Warren Ballantyne, please support him. If you don't, please take a chance to listen to him, hear what he's talking about because he's speaking a lot of the truth that is affecting the black community. And this 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 show basically is going to be about empowerment. I believe that I need to say something to him to really get the minds of the people to go on right. Right now, I'm in my conscious zone, I'm thinking, got my mind clear, and I want to let everybody in the whole world know what's going on. Um, pay attention, see the facts of what's going on. If you take a look at the um, entertainment industry, if you look, you got blatant Satanism going on in it, and you got a lot of people who are in the music industry that are leading us the wrong way. You guys think that pop culture is real cool these days. Unfortunately, 
there's a lot of reality that I need to shed with you all. Those big famous pop stars that you all look up to, a lot of them, a lot of them sign their blood on the dotted line. I think all that stuff is made up. Matter of fact, you can actually look up some of the videos and there's actually truth. And you can even hear it come out of the artist's mouth that that's what they do and that's what they actually believe in. The sick, twisted stuff. You guys need to stay out of pop culture. I mean, stay aware of it. Listen to what's new, what's hot. And try to come out with something that's similar but more positive and use a positive spin on it. Because we need something positive. We need to uplift people. It's all about education. The more education, the more knowledge you have, the better of a person you can become. And the better of a person you become, become other people will just look up to you and say, hey, this guy did it. I can do it. you got to put that spark in someone's mind. You put that spark in someone's mind. There's nothing you and everyone around you can't do. Nothing. you got to believe in yourself. So basically... It's like this. We are in a time, we are in a dire time. And this time right here called Melbourne, Florida is just so, it'll put you to sleep. But it's so it has good points to it. Like if you want to go places to hang out on Babcock further down, there's a place called Andretti. And like I said, I've been there when I was younger and rode on it, rode on the um, Grand Prix go-karts um the only the things that happen out here the only other club i can tell you about is county line if you ever county line is like it's basically a a country western club could play mainly country music but it's nice because i like country music anyway but the point of the matter is every now and then you'll have like people like these big known rap artists come out because i remember when i met run the mc there i got the autograph of my show i was so excited i got the autograph of um dmc I got the autograph of Reverend Run, and I got the autograph of Jam Master J. But the funny thing is, I was so disappointed because when I after I got the autograph and I had the shirt, the place where I was staying at, I had lost the shirt. So I lost that shirt, and somebody else got it. You know, it is what it is. But man, it's basically nothing to do out here. But I am gonna do what I can. I'm trying to organize and come with some people and see if we can set up something to happen out here. You know, because this looks like a place where we can make a lot happen. There's a lot of businesses opening out here, and maybe we can make things happen in the area called Melbourne, Florida. we got to wait this place up because it's like, you know, that's the reason why I want to go back today because of how it is up here. But who knows, man? In due time. So check this out. I want to ask off thank Tommy Sotomayor for um checking it out. So now I hope Tommy Sotomayor gives me a shout out on his video. If he doesn't, that's fine. But... I want him to know, but I'm the one who actually put it out there. That video I showed you about white women and, no, excuse me, I said that wrong. Black women love white men, period. That site I showed you. I mean, that's crazy. If you think about the mindset of all these black women that we're not good enough for them anymore. And then not only that, you got you got some black men that think like that about black, black, black women. But the point of the matter is, Why would you say something like that? Okay. Black man and a black woman make a black child. So when you're dissing, for example, if me a black man disrespecting a black woman, that means that I don't like myself because I'm dissing my own self. Why would you diss something that you come from when your mom black, your daddy black? Yeah. But I can understand the disparities that is going on between black men and black women. That's that that's understandable because if we don't understand each other no more, we don't want to listen to each other no more, why don't we just come together and do the following? Number one, we need to agree to disagree. Not only that, but we all need to see where each other's coming from. We need to take a look and say, for example, know, study that person, find out how you can see it from their standpoint and not just from your standpoint alone. And if the two of you try to compromise, work together, and come up with a solution, for example, a solution ain't gonna be just based on one person. If you have two, if you have two people in the in the in the problem, then it's gonna take the same two people to make that solution. So that person's opinion may be slightly different than the other person's opinion, but still, if you combine them, it could actually make it for a better solution than it would have been if one person did it. Remember, two heads think better than one. Why don't people think like that? And, and the problem is I have out here, now that we're, I'm going back into relationships, is that you see so many black women out here that have children with no baby father. Matter of fact, I spoke to my boy, my homeboy the other day. 
two days ago. And he was saying how so many black women like to pick the wrong men. This is Melbourne, Florida I'm talking about. I ain't talking about the rest of the United States, the Caribbean, or Africa, or Europe, or wherever. Or Asia, or any place like that. I'm basically telling you where it's coming from, from this area, Melbourne, Florida. Black women here do not have a name. Their mindset is like basically, I don't give a F word. I don't care. You got to give me money. It's all about you have to have money for these women out here. You have to have money. Some of them expect you to have a college degree. And, and guess what? None of them have one. If you look in the hood over there, they want you to have this. They want you to have a riding car. Yeah, roll on 24s or 28s or whatever the heck you want to call those things that you put on your car. But guess what? They're in the neighborhood having three or four different kids by three or four different baby daddies whom they don't even know. And that is going to be the destruction of blacks. If we continue with that same mindset, because we're not, instead of us thinking about trying to get out of the ghetto, we want to stay in the ghetto. And as long as we continue to think like that, there's never going to be no progress. I listen to the Warren Ballantyne show every day when I can. When I'm at work, I cannot, because that's when I work my hours. So in these episodes I listen to, if you listen to every episode on the Empowerment Radio Network, it actually says how black people are the only people who don't own a business. We are the number one purchase. All right, like when it, if we were to come to how much blacks consume as far as how much we spend on getting goods from other nations like China and other countries or anywhere else, um, we're at the highest. We're in the trillions now. We're going towards the trillions as far as what we spend. Our income, we don't keep none of our income within the community. We don't, and even if we do build a, a, a store in our own community, we don't support it. We'll go ahead and support the Korean guy. We'll support the white guy. We'll support the Latino or Hispanic guy or anybody else basically than our own selves. Why? Because that's just the slavery mindset of us as a, as a people. We complain about it, but yet we continue to do the same thing over and over again. So that's not going to change anything. Now, I mean, when it comes to a community, yeah. If I see a community like, you see, that's why I'm advertising Lizzie's, because Lizzie's is a black store, a black-owned store. So I decided to put Lizzie's there so you guys can see that it's out there. If any of you guys happen to stop by Melbourne and y'all see this place called Lizzie's down there on University Boulevard, y'all need to get y'all behinds on down there because they do got good food down there. They do make curry chicken. So, I mean, check them out. We got to support our own communities just as much as we support every other community. Matter of fact, we got to support our community more so than any other community. We got to support our own community first before we can even branch out and do anything else. That's what we got to do. Also, um, I wanted to talk about something that really touched me deeply, that really kind of made me feel that way. Um, we're going back to the, the, um, the woman that one of the one, day, in matter of fact, the two stories are going to be in the same segment where it's going to be one woman who killed her babies and then you had the other one who was pregnant, drove the car into the, and tried to drive it into the ocean off the beach with her three other kids inside the car, claiming that she was in an abusive relationship. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you those segments and I'm going to definitely have my thoughts on it. So um, stay tuned, man. This is the True Juice Show, and I appreciate you all looking. I'm um, working on This is a work in progress. We're going to get it together, and we're going to do something for y'all. All right? Let's do this. Check this out. This is what we call a showcase moment. I can't get the camera to adjust here that well. I'm doing the best I can. The artist here named is Kilo, and um, I'm checking his music out. I get material from a lot of artists. Um pretty much pretty often like every week I'll get like a whole bunch of inboxes of some talent so we're going we, this is our spotlight of the day Ruckus Kilo the name of the song is called Trap Life it's the clean version
That was Trap Life by Kilo. I'd like to thank you all guys for um, checking me out on the Chuju show. I know things didn't go the way that exactly it was supposed to go. It went kind of hectic, man, you know. But um, it's the time set that uh, the time frame that I have right now is like an uneasy one, but I'm bouncing there. And, you know, I'm definitely going to come out with more episodes. And um, I'm going to showcase some more talent. That's just a little sample of what I'm going to do as far as showcasing talent. That's the first artist that I'm going to showcase. The next artist that I also want to showcase, one of the next people I want to talk to is Amanda Pollard. If any of you heard Amanda Pollard's music, yeah, you know she's a phenomenal superstar in the making. Um, on her page, I think she's currently number one at Reverb Nation. The, um, just type Amanda Pollard on, you can do it on the Google search, you can do it on the um, Bing search, and you'll find her. She'll pop right up. Or you can put Amanda Pollard, singer. Because you also, I believe you also have a model that's name is Amanda Pollard as well, and she looks nothing like her. So, you guys definitely need to check her out. She's getting millions and millions of fans across the globe, and she's doing it big. So, on that note, I'd like to end you all. End it with you all and say live long, prosper. Appreciate you all for supporting my show. I'm going to come out with a new episode next week. Hope you'll be better than this one. This one's I know it's a little whack, a little corny, but it's just about uplifting. And I want to end the cap. I want to cap this off by saying that it's time for uh, the black women to wake up. It obviously is. Y'all need to listen to this woman named Melissa Speaks, man. She is speaking the truth. Melissa Speaks has been saying a lot of things that a lot of black women need to address on. So, you know, I'm going to come out with more truth on my show. Little by little by little, I'm just going to bring it right out. But get ready for the next episode because this one, this one right here is a little weak because it was kind of rushed. And I was trying to get it together and then I missed the deadline of releasing it this past weekend. So, I still will be coming out with another episode this weekend. I'm trying to see where to go, what hang out, do. Maybe I'm just going to play around and just make up some crazy things on the show because this is a spontaneous show. It's not just a show talking about issues. It's not just a show showcasing talent. It's about the lifestyle of me in Melbourne, Florida and other people that I see or that I happen to have on film and things like that. So, I'll let your boy, man. Stay tuned. True Drew episode is coming up. And, um, the True Drew show, it is what it is. I'm here to stay. I got a lot of big things popping this year, you know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I'm supposed to be heading out this weekend with my mom. It's gonna be Friday. I want to remember to do this um, protesting that we got going on with the SEIU. 